what we basically learn in the One World program is how to express our everyday lives into music. I guess it pushed me to try my hardest. When you're in the One World Youth Arts Project, you, you think of yourself as almost elite, you know what I mean? I'm in the dopest music program in, in, the, in, the, in Canada. For my high school experience, it was kind of the, the most important thing I did. Um, the thing I'll remember for the rest of my life. People coming to observe my class as a fly on the wall, you're going to look and you're going to see computers and sound equipment. At first blush, you're going to say, well, that's a very technological program. And I guess it is, but you know, we're in a technological world. Well, technology is my favorite part of the class. Um, the greatest thing is being able to take the music you make and use the technology that we have to make it sound more fulfilled. I ended up learning a lot about not just music, like I learned about programs, how to create your own programs, how to set up your own studio at home. Technology arrived on the scene that allowed us to recreate a studio or a creative environment in the high school. And that, uh, that resonated with some of these kids who could really play quite well. But uh, how do you teach something like that? I mean, it's a whole new idea. What I learned uh, is that a great teacher creates an environment for learning and then gets out of the way. Okay, something like that. Let's see what you can do. He allows the students to have a lot of ownership in what they do. You know, they work in the studios, they work amongst themselves. He doesn't bug them too much, but when, when he does, when he does work with them, you know, it's, it's really potent, you know, it's um, quality over quantity, so to speak. It's actually very easy to incorporate this kind of idea into a, a high school program. You start with one workstation such as this, which this would be about two to three thousand dollars worth of stuff. And you put it in an unused or a practice room or a closet somewhere and allow students to come in after school or at lunch and, and work on the workstation, and record their instruments and maybe create some music. And that can be the genesis uh, of a whole enhancement to a regular music program. People like me who weren't blessed enough to, to learn how to read music, you know, there's other ways to make music, you know, and the One World Youth Arts Project that pretty much introduced it to me. There are opportunities in this program that really mirror many of the opportunities that young people will experience when they uh, leave high school and go into business for themselves or into further study uh, of the music industry. We really try to uh, mirror or mimic what goes on in the quote-unquote real world and we get involved in musical performances and events that involve a lot of different uh, educational opportunities. Working with the up-and-coming artists in the school, um, I got a chance to exercise what it would mean to be a producer and get a, get an early head start on that. Uh, that was the most uh, uh, life-changing for me because that's exactly what I'm doing now. So um, getting that early head start there, um, it was really beneficial to me. While I was in the program, I was actually learning things that I could use to make a record. And uh, when I was in the studio, you know, when I was 16, and I'm working with pretty well-seasoned, you know, producers, and I didn't feel stupid. I didn't feel like I was missing anything. I felt like I really could, uh, you know, express myself too if I had an idea because of the fact that I'd learned this already in school. Okay, so I'm just going to take you through a little bit of history of music. I guess the lessons we have too, they teach us more about what we can do and it expands our knowledge of music and stuff like that, which expands our creativity, the right? The piano. You know, 
also made us learn about, you know, the piano stuff and about harmony and things like that that were just integral anyways in music, you know. That was probably the most difficult classroom bit of what we did, but um, still really important. What happens when you listen to this? The idea of music's place in society is, is pivotal to what we do. And also analyzing uh, music that we're hearing, how the music makes you feel, and in the context of how that music has an impact uh, in the, in the community and in the society at large. I'm gonna play some, some of the earliest music that we know. Today we were introduced to the power of creativity and what music is all about and how that can have uh, an impact uh, on culture, uh, immediately and across time. So we talk about Gregorian chant having an impact thousands of years after it was created. You know those CDs that One World has put out over time? You know that the National Library in Canada tells us we have to send them two copies. It's possible that 2,000 years from now that somebody could be experiencing the music that we've created. To be able to reach across time and touch the hearts of humanity way off in the future. My question to you is, what do you want to say? It's amazing how motivated the students can be when you tell them they can actually do something with their music, right? When you tell them their, uh, their CD might be found 100 years later and listened to, then they really start to think about what they want to say. And they, they start to take themselves seriously. And they start to see potential in themselves. He encourages you to be creative, you know? He encourages you to find your own voice for this for the CD and, and be really proud of whatever comes out in the end project. And, and that, that's a pretty important lesson you gotta keep for the rest of your life if you're gonna be a musical person. And, uh, and he was just, he really nurtured that. He didn't want you to be somebody else. He wanted you to be yourself. And I'm still trying to do that every day, so. The, the Socratic kind of teaching, the interactive kind of teaching that we do is not the majority of, of the kind of work. We try to give the students as much time to move in their own direction and actually uh, do uh, experiential stuff, hands-on hands -on work. There's always a few things they should be doing in every class if they're not being directed by the instructor. Uh, they're encouraged to write in their journals, to uh, work on their keyboard skills, and there's always a, a creation assignment that uh, is a creative assignment but within parameters that they're given. And then they're also asked to develop their own independent study work. Some of our at-risk kids that come into this program do a remarkable turnaround. I was going through a lot of issues when I enrolled into this program. I was lost completely. I didn't know, I was got myself in gangs and... We get kids coming to this program that are miserable and hate school and can't wait to get out of school. And this, for some of them, provides them a fresh start. That got me out of my house every morning to go to school and go through with my other classes. It was solely, I'm not telling no lies, it was solely because of that music program. So that's an important outcome, um, turning kids into, into uh, good, contributing, positive, self-affirming citizens. You gotta slow it down. What should I put it for, 80? We're going to be connected uh, by broadband to satellite programs all over the city uh, and the province and the country, and we're working on it down the road, all One World programs will be connected by broadband where young people can collaborate in near real time through broadband on the creation of music. So that's why we call it One World because uh, if the vision is realized, the next generation of the world's children as part of their public school experience will be working collaboratively with their brothers and sisters all over the planet on the creation of music that is uh, immersed in the one world philosophy of positivism, self-actualization, global conscience and equity. If one world is realized to its fullest potential, we see it as uh, an opportunity to really change the world and 
the way that's going to move forward is for arts teachers and music teachers to come on board, start with one workstation, give students the environment and let them go, tell them what's possible, and look at our track record, look at what the One World graduates are doing, and I think we're on the cusp of something really great.